In Rise of Kingdoms, Sunset Canyon, it's a game mode for what that's worth. And obviously, it's not the most important game mode, but it is one that you can get a little bit of free value in. So in today's video, I'll be updating my top Sunset Commander tier list. I haven't touched this tier list in quite a while. So if you're looking to get the best Sunset Canyon commanders, even just using some different commanders that you may already own, you will definitely want to stick around till the end of the video. Now let's start off today's video with two things. First of all, I am losing my voice a little bit, which obviously is not the best for making YouTube videos, but that is if my voice sounds weird, that is why, and if I get a few voice cracks, that is also probably why. But on top of that, the next thing I would like to look about is why would I rank a certain commander high on a Sunset Commander tier list? What makes a commander good in Sunset Canyon? There are a few things. First of all, if a commander is very, very tanky, like at an absurd level, they're going to get a fairly high ranking on the list just because Sunset Canyon isn't about sev wounds and healing in terms of what it does, just makes you die much slower. So just giving a march a ton of tankiness can definitely give them a good ranking on today's list. So any super tanky commanders, hint hint Constantine, will get really, really good ranks on the Sunset Commander list. On top of this, commanders which have short bursty damage with usually a big AoE, just really quick cycles, they don't really need to ramp up. They're also going to get a really good ranking since in Canyon, some commanders, if they don't get the time that they need, they're just going to get wrecked. So if you can get those fast, punchy commanders, they'll be doing a lot better. And the other thing I look at is obviously buffs and debuffs because those are important. Obviously, things that are damaging debuffs will be better here. So something as, for example, Boudicca Prime's active skill debuff it's a massive increase on the opponent's damage they take. So that's definitely a really, really nice thing to have. And it is, once again, an instant debuff, very punchy, very fast. And those things that are increasing the amount of damage people take to kill them quicker definitely help with their Sunset Canyon ranking. Now, with that out of the way, let's switch over to the tier list. So here is the tier list today. As usual, we have got a total of five tiers. The best tier is meta breaking. These commanders are just overpowered. The second best tier, they work well. These commanders are decent. Maybe there's one thing about them that's not the best for Canyon. Or a lot of people have them and they can work. And I think that they're worthy of putting in a Canyon lineup instead of using really niche commanders. Then you've got those decent commanders. I mean, they're decent. They work. If you've got them, you can use them if you have no other options. And they will trade pretty well. Then you've got the air. Eh. These commanders are like, they're, they're air. Eh. They're not amazing. They're not really garbage. But you wouldn't want to use them unless it's like a last option. Like maybe a fifth march. And then you've got, nah, these commanders just don't use them. They're not good. They're not powerful. They're not going to allow you to get really good canyon results. They're just pretty much useless. Starting off today, firstly, we've got Alexander the Great. And he's going to go into, he's going to go into the work well. He's pretty punchy. He's got instant damage. He's got decent stats. And he's got the shielding. Those things can make him pretty tanky. It can make him do some fairly good damage. And obviously, the instant damage definitely gets him a good spot. Attila and Takeda, they're both going to go into the decent tier. They're not really commanders you actually see in Canyon a whole lot, just because even though they are fairly anti-swarm, there's usually a lot of infantry in Sunset Canyon, and I feel it does kind of counter that Attila and Takeda march a little bit. That being said, it's definitely going to be like the top of decent tier. It's got a lot of the stuff you want, but Attila and Takeda isn't very punchy. It's not doing very much damage. It's more there to make the opponents take a lot more sev wounds. So it's not the best, but not the worst for Canyon. It's got some good things about it. Xiao Xiao, he, he's kind of an air. He can work. I mean, he's just damage factor. He's not the worst, but he's definitely not near the best. Chandragupta, he's also going to go in the air. He's like another commander where it's not very good to run him. He does need a lot of ramp up time. He's more of a debuff oriented commander. And if you aren't getting slightly longer engagements with him, he's not going to be getting much value. Obviously, I mean, Charlemagne's a nah. Charles Martel is going to go into decent. I mean, he is decent. That's the best way to look at him. He's got a good shield. He's got some pretty okay damage in terms of the counterattack, but he is lacking on instant punchy damage factor, which definitely does knock him down a tier. Doesn't really have any debuffs. Also does knock him down quite a bit. So he's got a very, very tanky thing about him. So if you wanted him for like a third or fourth canyon march, definitely very good idea if you want something that's just really survivable and won't die very fast. CJ, also decent, just because he's a very punchy commander, but he's not tanky at all, doesn't really have any debuffs. He's more just there for literal damage if you do have him. All the gathering commanders, I mean, they're relatively useless in Canyon. They can all just go into the Nartir, 
because as you can imagine, gathering is not the most important, like at all when it comes to Sunset Canyon, so these commanders are completely useless. Harold, I'm going to put him also at the decent, probably above T Attila Takeda. He isn't really anti-swarm, he's kind of got some tankiness in him, but really it's his punchy damage factor again that gets him this higher ranking. So I can see Pakal doing a decent in Canyon. He's not as good as he used to be. Maybe back when I made my original tier list, he'd be at the decent or even meta. But right now, he's not as OP as he used to be. A lot of archers do counter him, and his damage factor is a little bit lackluster. But it is good punchy damage, it is instant active skill stuff you do want to see. Nevsky, meta breaking. I mean, he's got an instant debuff. A lot of targets usually get swarmed in Canyon. He works well with AoE punchy commanders. He is a punchy commander himself. He's really stat heavy. Nevsky, one of the best Canyon commanders. Pretty much everybody runs him in Canyon. And if you don't, the real question is, what are you doing? Pyrus, Pyrus is, is decent, actually. He's got punchy damage. He's somewhat tanky. I think, pretty sure if I'm not mistaken, he's got a bit of a shielding. And he's a decent overall commander for Canyon, especially KVK 1 and 2 and 3 even. He can do very well. But obviously not a go-to commander unless you have him expertise. Hanbu Barker, I wanna I'm actually kind of battling between Air and Nar, but I'm gonna put him in Nar just because his damage is very low. He might have a little bit of tankiness to him if I'm not mistaken, but even then it's just not enough to make up for his very lackluster kit. Artemisia, she's an air, to be fair. Boudicca Prime, her best pairing, has definitely got better pairs for Canyon. And she's a decent commander in terms of Canyon strength. But if she gets silenced, like, at all, because Boudicca Prime is not a guaranteed silence removal, if you do get silenced, it's pretty much over for that march. There's not much more value you're going to get out of it before it does end up dying off. So I'm not the biggest fan of Artemisia in Canyon. She can work. If you get lucky, she can be, like, at the decent tier. But if you get unlucky, she can really screw you over. So I think the air tier is probably where she belongs. Gilgamesh, similar case, especially with CPO Prime, Gilgamesh isn't going to be getting much value from his debuff, and he's got relatively low damage factor, so nothing more really needs to be said. Yanziska, I actually do see him at the decent tier, fairly decent, punchy, kind of stat-heavy commander, can't go too wrong with him, he doesn't really have any downsides at all, but he's not really got any upsides, so I wouldn't say he's at the work well or meta-breaking tier. All the ranged commanders, to my knowledge, do, they don't start in their ranged form, so I'm just going to probably pop all of them in the air tier in terms of Sunset Canyon because they need time to switch into that range form, if I'm not mistaken. They may have changed that. If they did, some of these range commanders could be decent, but considering the enemies run straight at you, it kind of isn't very good for any of the range commanders since range commanders like to play on the fact that the enemies are pretty far away from them. They can pretty much get free chip damage. All of that stuff is what range commanders really do need. So... When you look at range commanders, it is really down to that distance that gives them power and that open field almost strategy. So all four of them are pretty not very good in Canyon, so I wouldn't really run them. Flavius, probably not very good. He's a bit tanky in terms of like just being a garrison commander, but not very good for Canyon. Ethel Flint, she's pretty decent actually. She is pretty good with Trajan. She's got OK debuff. She's got AoE. She's completely free. I mean, you can run her just because she is free. She's just a commander you can't really go wrong with. Obviously though, not meta breaking at all. But if you have her, I wouldn't say it's too crazy to run her. YSS, not the best at all in like anything, especially open field wise. Zenobia, same thing. She can be okay with the healing if you do have her, but it is pretty outdated nowadays. Maybe back when she first released, she could be like up at the work well tier. But nowadays, I wouldn't say she is super meta. Edward of Woodstock, not at all. I mean, his rage cycle is much too slow to actually be a good canyon commander and it just definitely ruins his kit. Zulang, meta, I mean, 5 target AoE, really good debuff, really fast raid cycle, very punchy if you have him expertise, can't go wrong with him, like, at all. Suleiman, nothing more needs to be said. Ashwani Pal, he can work well as well, fast raid cycle with the skill tree, very punchy, pretty good single target damage or AoE damage, depending on what you're fighting, and he is somewhat tanky if you do get that expertise and you get some of the health stats, for example, to trigger, so you can't really go wrong with Ashwani Pal, I think he is a pretty decent canyon commander right now. And I'd say arguably better than a lot of these lower tier ones. Joan Prime, meta, punchy, AoE, fairly good buffs. Even though it's not the most meta breaking, they are buffs. Can't go wrong with her. Constantine, meta breaking. He's got the best healing in the game and like 80,000 healing factor whenever he gets low on troops. It is ridiculous. You're just going to go from pretty much dead all the way to max. And I've seen so many Canyon fights just time out trying to beat a Constantine. And on defense, if they time out, I'm pretty sure it's a tie or it's a loss from your end. So that means you do get to either keep your position or actually gain points. So Constantine, he's easily, like, I'm just going to drag him right to the front. Best Canyon commander, just because of how tanky he is. Even though your trades on the open field with him would be absolutely garbage, we don't really care about that in Canyon. So he is the best Canyon commander. Mehmed, eh, he's decent, but he's not 
better than like these commanders up in the working world here. He's kind of just an average overall commander. Works well with some commanders. Pretty good punchy AoE. No debuffs. Kind of outdated. Not the highest damage factor. That's kind of his issues. But he isn't the worst. Henry, he works well. I mean, he's fairly tanky. He's fairly punchy for some like commanders because he's got the active skill just having a damage factor. And he's got a bit of revenge damage. So if he's getting swarmed, he'll do alright. If he's not getting swarmed, he'll do alright. He's pretty good all around, which is why I think he's worthy of the work well tier. If he had a good debuff, he'd definitely be up here, but he doesn't. So the work well tier, probably towards the bottom. Jedwiga, I mean, I would never run a Jedwiga in Ganyan at all. She's pretty much useless. Trajan, he's also going to go into the work well. I mean, his debuffs are nice. His tankiness can be really, really good. And just the fact that there's this extra commander on there, giving your pretty much March as a ton of buffs as well, really does give him a lot of value in Canyon. And in terms of like Canyon situations, he is one of the better Marchers because he does do pretty good in shorter engagements compared to those much longer fights. And you'll notice pretty much all top player Canyons will have a Trajan in there. Leo Chu, I'm going to grab the better image of him. He is... Definitely a very good canyon commander. Punchy AoE, infantry commander. It definitely has some okay debuffs in terms of march speed reduction, even though it's not the most amazing. It can be a right in terms of slowing them down from getting to your other marches, which means you can sometimes kill off an enemy march before they reach you. That's kind of niche, but it is kind of nice. And just the fact that he's got really punchy AoE, you can't go too wrong with him. Nebu, decent. I mean, he's got AoE similar to Mehmed, I'd say, in strength, in terms of canyon like strength at least. And he's just going to do okay. Very squishy though, definitely a big downside. And he does have the rage reduction though, which is nice. So reducing your opponent's rage, always nice. And he's going to be pretty good for that. William works well. The only thing that's wrong with William is AoE can be a bit tough to get value from in Canyon. Just because in Canyon, it's not as vast as open field. In the open field, there's hundreds of marches. You're going to hit somebody. But sometimes if he angles the wrong way, he's going to kind of miss. And he's going to hit someone else or hit nothing at all. So that can definitely be a problem. And that is probably his biggest downside. He's got really good buffs, so he's got obviously a pretty good debuff. If he didn't have that weird chef AoE, he'd be here, but he just has that small disadvantage, which in my opinion puts him down a little bit, probably at the same power level as Alexander the Great. Who's a Tian? Uh, Tarek Ibn Ziyad, I'm going to put him into decent. I mean, he is okay punchy infantry commander. Nothing too crazy about him. All around pretty normal in terms of just commander power. Theodora, she does have AoE, so I'm going to put her in the air tier. If you have her expertise from a while ago and you have no other commanders, she can work. But, like, she she is an OP, like, at all. It's just not even close. Bertrand, fairly tanky, actually. He's single target damage. Your opponents obviously can't run away from you, so he can get some value there. It's not super punchy, though. That's his biggest problem. And I think that if he was a little bit more punchy, he would probably be a bit higher on this, like, at least the decent tier. But he isn't, so that's his biggest issue. Julius Caesar. He's not punchy enough, but he can give you a lot of just sustained damage, which can be nice against something like a Constantine. So that can help, but that's really the only place he'd really excel. Minamoto, he's actually pretty good in Canyon. His single target damage is absurd. And just for the fact that you can buy him with money, you can double relic him and get a ton of stats. And he works well with most Cav commanders. I think he is an okay commander choice for Sunset Canyon at the very least. Cyrus, eh, he's more of a debuff commander, he's not the best in terms of damage, he can be a bit punchy sometimes, but he's very luck based, and similar with Artemisia, I don't think it's good to have a commander who you rely on luck for, especially in canon, because there is no retrying, once you lose that round, you do lose that round, and you're going to lose points because of it. Pakal, he's going up there with Harold, pretty much Pakal and Harold are till it's a they're at the tide level, they're both relatively anti-swarm, but they're both fairly slow in terms of dealing damage. Pakal and Harold can deal some okay damage, so that's why it's a bit better than Attila Takeda, but they aren't as punchy or they don't have as many debuffs as the commanders in the higher tiers. Honda, pretty much the same as Mehmed. You might see him a little bit more often, so I put him just above the Nebu, but he isn't the most overpowered Cav... But he isn't the most overpowered Canyon commander. Belisarius Prime, I'm tempted to say works well, but honestly, just because of the fact you can't really get the five target swarm very consistently, I think he's just a decent commander for Canyon. You can run him, he'll work, but he isn't going to be the meta level. He does have that decent debuff on the active skill, but you're missing out on a ton of value from his expertise. He's definitely more of a swarming commander. In Canyon, you might get swarming if you get lucky or if you kill a lot of the enemy marchers, but by then you've pretty much won anyway. So he's not very good when you really do need him to be good, which is why I think decent is a decent tier for him. Gorgo, she's going to go into works pretty well. Her biggest downside is the fact she has no march speed. In Canyon, like I said, even though there is a little bit of a niche use with March Speed Reductions, 
it isn't the biggest issue. So Gorgo with Leotura is a pretty decent march. The one thing, though, if you're running Alexander the Great or you have him expertise, I mean, Gorgo is just completely useless. So do keep that in mind. But if you don't have Alexander the Great and you've got Gorgo, you can chuck her into your canyon and she will do pretty good. If your Alex is tied up with CPO, for example, Gorgo is a pretty good pickup. Mulan, she's going to go into the decent tier. I want to put her at, like, probably just behind the Atul and Takeda. She is good with Trajan. She's just a really, really good buffing march. I think she's also got a pretty okay debuff in there. And she can be fairly tanky if you do double relic her, so that is nice. Eleanor, she doesn't really have anything for Canyon if we're being fully realistic. Leonidas, he's okay maybe if he's like a bit tanky with Guan, but he isn't your go-to. Frederick, not good at all really in Canyon. Like he can be all right rarely, but pretty much never. Mock the Zuma, I mean, do I have to say anything else? YSG, he's fairly punchy, he's got pretty good AoE, used to be the best canyon commander of all time, now I say he's probably not, but he is still a fairly decent punchy canyon commander, so he can work well in canyon, and the instant AoE, high skill damage, definitely is a nice thing, especially if you put him in the back lines, because once again, you can't really target, like the opponents can't target your marches, so it's really up to the way you position them, so if you position YSG well, he is going to do very well. Heroclius, decent, I mean Heroclius can get a pretty amazing trade in terms of just on the canyon side because he's really tanky he's got tons of shielding you can't really go wrong with that in canyon and that just means he is a relatively good canyon commander but he isn't high damage and his shielding can sometimes be outpowered so that's why he's not working well but he is definitely decent cp africanus that that's all i have to say i mean he's got a good aoe he's got one of the best debuffs in the game he is relatively tanky he can give your opponent you give you shield sorry so he's just a really good commander for canyon Ditto, yeah, she doesn't really have anything going for her. El Cid, same thing. He can work, but nothing really going for him. Guan Yu, actually going to put him into meta breaking. For Canyon, his instant silence debuff is insane against everybody besides the archers. So unless your opponent's running a ton of archers, which rarely happens, like unless you versus me in Canyon, your Guan Yu is going to be really, really powerful. His instant debuff is great. He doesn't need any ramp up. It's like heat reactive skill and just get going. And if you do put him back lines with CPO, he can do pretty good if he's not targeted because that's his biggest issue, not being tanky. If he's not targeted, I mean, he's just going to get a crap ton of kills. Herman Prime, he's going to go into the work well. Herman does kind of need a bit of ramp up to get his full value. And while he is pretty good in the open field, I think that in terms of using Herman Prime in Canyon, if you can't get that full ramp up, he's not as meta breaking, but he is definitely a decent Canyon commander. I'll say he's at the top of the working world tier, but I can't justify putting him up with these commanders who were super punchy, super instant damage, super instant debuffs, or just ridiculously tanky. Lubu, all right, nothing more needs to be said. Boudicca Prime, also probably going to go into the work well tier. Punchy debuff, punchy single target damage. Can't really go wrong with her in a canyon if you do run her. And she will be up there with some of the better marches, especially that instant debuff. I mean, it's going to make them just pretty much melt any march they hit. And once again, if you position her in a way that she can't get targeted, she is going to get a ton of kills. A monetary actually can be okay with Artemisia sometimes because she is a guaranteed silence remover. But do keep in mind that it is a very rare march to see, and it is sometimes very squishy. So that's something you should keep in mind. The thing that their biggest disadvantage, though, with Amanatory Artemisia was the fact that Amanatory doesn't have any march speed, and Artemisia also doesn't have march speed. But in Canyon, march speed isn't as important, like, at all. So they can do pretty okay. Ragnar, decent with Attila if you don't have Takeda. Tamiris, she's pretty much useless in Canyon, I'd say, because with Herman Prime nowadays, He's just going to remove her debuffs, or she's going to remove his debuffs. And also, you're not going to get real much time to ramp her up. Zeng Yu, probably, I'm going to say, I'm, I'm torn between working well and decent. I might just put him in work well. Punchy Rage Cycle, Fast Rage, AoE, pretty alright debuff if you don't have Nevsky. Most people have Nevsky, though. He's got the AoE version of Nevsky's debuff, so he can do pretty good in Canyon. Ramsey's, nah, he doesn't really have much going for him. Richard, I'm going to put him into the meta breaking. The reason I do that... He is definitely a good substitute to Constantine. He's a great pairing to Constantine. He's dumb tanky. You just can't go wrong with a Richard and Canyon. So if you've got a Richard and Canyon, free kills, or not free kills, it's free win pretty much if your Richard is at an expertise level. Even I, with a ton of Archer Marchers who counter Richards, I pretty much don't fight him if I see a Richard in a lineup just because I know how tanky he can be and how much of a nuisance he can be to kill. The only issue with Richard, obviously, would be the fact that on the open field he sucks, but in Canyon, just because of how tanky he is, he is a good commander. Saladin, decent because of how tanky he is in Canyon. Then it doesn't trigger while he's in Canyon because you haven't been in there for 30 seconds. So I'm going to place him at the decent tier. 
just because I'm not sure about that. If his skill does trigger, and if I'm mistaken there, he would be in the works well because he's got the punchy, fast rage. But if not, he loses a lot of his value because that third skill or second skill, whichever one has the faster rage cycle, is one of his most important skills. And without it, he is much, much weaker. Sargon, similar to similar sorry, to Bertrand, they can get some value because your opponents can't really run away from you. Once they hit you, they hit you. And both these commanders can do okay in 1v1s. Justinian, similar situation, just fairly tanky sometimes. Decent damage, not too bad overall. Thutmaris, I wouldn't really run him if I don't have to. And then finally, Genghis Khan. Once again, I wouldn't really run him. All he's got is really punchy damage factor. So now this is the final Canyon tier list. There wasn't really much to shift around here. I pretty much put them in order as I was ranking them. You could maybe argue like I could move around some of the guys in the decent tier. The air tier and the nar tier, I never touched them. So don't worry about that. But really, this is like pretty much the order from the best commander being Constantine down to the worst one that I ordered. Pretty much being like a Saladin. So that's kind of ordered. I didn't order it too hard. But this is pretty much what you do. So if you have any of these commanders, you can run them in Canyon. If you have any of these commanders, they'll work. If you have any in the Air tier, I probably wouldn't run them unless you absolutely have to. And then in the Nar tier, I would just pretty much avoid them at all times. You'd probably be better off sometimes running epic commanders over some of these commanders. Now, if you enjoyed today's video, I want to ask you guys for an obviously very small favor. And that is, please do consider joining my Discord server. It is a really good place just to ask questions, even just talk to me, message me, whatever it may be. You can obviously do that in my Discord. So if you want to talk to me, message me, ask other players questions, ask about your commanders, equipment, armaments, whatever it may be, join the Archer Syndicate Discord. Link will be in the pinned comment and also in the description. Trust me, you won't regret it. And if you do, you can always leave. Now, I just want to say I thank you all for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.